Hey everybody, brought to you by BU Fitness, another video today. We're gonna go into an upper body workout plus core today. So let's go ahead and talk about what we're doing. We're gonna do a count up of six reps, eight reps, 12 reps, and 16 reps of each of these movements here. Um, this would be a work up. So you would do a bridge with press, which you would do six reps. And once you're done with your six reps, you go into your overhead shrugs with a dumbbell, and you would do six. You do your wall sits with bicep curls, and you would do six. Floor flies with six reps, and then shoulder get-ups with six reps. So once you get through that first six reps of those each movements, then you would move on to eight movements. So then you would go back to the start. You do your, your second set of all eight, and then you go into all 12, and you go into all 16. Once you get to your shoulder get-ups, um, I would suggest if you would like to, do a 35 to one minute rest in between each to give yourself um, a little bit of rest between the, the, the rounds, but I would like you to work all the way through without rest with these movements before we move on to the next. So once you get through all of these rounds here, uh, go ahead and take like a two to three minute rest, and then we're gonna get into our finishers. So we have two rounds of a Tabata. So a Tabata is usually eight rounds. It's usually 20 to 10 seconds rest, but I change it to 30 to 15 seconds rest. If you would like to do the original, definitely go ahead. This one's gonna be a little bit longer, a little bit more rest, but still a lot more challenging. So the first round we would do is quadruptus skiers and then plank rows. So we go back to back for eight rounds of that. It should equal out about four, um, um, eight rounds of that. And then we go into, uh, once we get those eight rounds, we go into the plank side crunches and V-ups back and forth with eight rounds of that for 30 seconds on and 15 seconds rest. So this one's gonna be, a, these are gonna be a little burner, so this is a nice little finisher for you as well. So let's go ahead and talk about what we're doing today. I'm gonna go ahead and review, review everything with you, and then you can get on and get into it, okay? So our first movement today is called the bridge with press. So I'm gonna kinda do this like I'm doing a, a bench press. Uh, you can do a neutral grip press with this as well. That's your choice. I'll show you both ways, whatever one's gonna be comfortable more for your shoulders and, and your chest. So I have two dumbbells here. They're about 10 pounds. You can do whatever to, uh, rep choice or weight choice you choose. I'm gonna get my feet set. I'm about hip foot apart right here. I'm gonna get, make sure my feet are nice and straight on. I'm gonna make sure my heels always have contact with the, the floor surface. I'm gonna go ahead and lie down on my back. It's like so. Before I even start, I'm gonna squeeze my glutes. Make sure I'm activating them properly and driving my heels to the ground. I'm going to hold for about three seconds. I'm going to do this three times to make sure I'm activating properly. So I'm going to engage my glutes, squeeze my glutes, hold for about three, three seconds, and then drive my heels to the ground and drive my feet and grip. So I'm going to get my legs firing up, squeeze my glutes, make sure my core is coming on properly. So that means I'm ready to start my movement. So I'm going to go ahead and grab my dumbbells on the sides. I'm going to go ahead and angle my hands about I would say 45 degrees out. I don't, you can be straight on, but I do about 45 degrees because it's a little bit easier on your shoulders. I'm gonna go ahead and reach my hips up. Deep breath in, quick breath out to engage my core, lift my hips up, and then I'm gonna go also drive my shoulders down and back, squeeze my shoulder blades together while I'm holding the bridge position, and do a press. Coming up, I'm gonna line up with the eyes. My eyes, then bring it back down to the chest. I'm almost making a triangle. So I'm going up to the eyes. You can touch the middle if you need to. It kind of helps you stay on track. And come back down. Bring my hips down. That's one rep. Come back up. Keep it in. Boots on. Core's on. Holding. Coming up. One. One. That's two. Bring my hips up. I'm activating my feet. Right to the floor. Keep it in. Put breath out. Coming up. Breathing out. Breathing in, bring the hips down, breathing out. So that is our bridge with press. So let's go on to our next movement. Our next movement involves dumbbells as well. I'm gonna grab these, stand up, I'm gonna have my feet hip width apart. I don't wanna lock my knees out on slight soft knees. I'm gonna go ahead and bring my dumbbells up to my shoulders, keep my rib cage down, pressing them overhead. And then all I'm going to do is shrug upward. So I'm driving my shoulders up, shrugging up towards the ear, and bringing back down, keep my neck nice and long. I'm not bobbing my head forward at all, because that means the weight's a little bit too heavy, so I want to make sure I keep my head in a neutral position. I'm just shrugging. Do six reps, shrugging up and down. Keep my rib cage down. 
I'm squeezing my glutes, keeping my core, and I'm not bobbing my head forward. I'm not overextending my rib cage. I'm bringing everything down and keeping it nice and back. And I'm just pushing through, just like if you're doing little punches with your shoulders. So that is our overhead shrug. So the next one, we're gonna go ahead and take it to the wall. Get into some wall sits. My dumbbells. And I have my feet a little bit wider than a hip width apart. I'm gonna sit down into the squat. I'm gonna go ahead and angle my elbows open just like so. Make sure my elbows are pinned to the wall. I'm gonna have my head pinned as well. Pressing my back against the wall. So the back and pack and elbows pinned. Belly really button to spine, taking deep breath in. Front breath out to brace. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and curl those dumbbells as high as I can. Keep my elbows pinned and slowly, slowly uh, bringing them down the wall, but I'm not fully extending my arms. We don't want to ever lock out our arms with a dumbbell curl. So coming up, right back down, and we're just going to hold. Doing our six reps, keep it nice and close. Trying to bring it up as far as we can. I'm contracting the bicep, I'm squeezing just like if I was doing a bicep curl and flexing. I'm doing that while I'm doing the movement as well. Always contracting and think about lengthening that movement. So we hold. Do that core nice and tight. And then we go on to our next movement, which is our floor flies. So the floor flies, I'm gonna go ahead, place my dumbbells at the sides, make sure my knees are bent. I'm gonna lie down, have my neutral back position. My lower back shouldn't be flattened to the ground, just a neutral lumbar thoracic, or lumbar spine right here. So come up, bring it up to here. I'm gonna kind of hook them together on a slight bend of my elbows. Just like if I was pulling a string across my chest, I'm gonna go ahead and do the same with the dumbbells. Nice and easy, controlled at all times. Float them right above the ground here, and then pulling my chest together. I'm thinking about squeezing my chest together, squeezing it up just like if I'm pulling something in. It's really heavy, and I'm activating those mu my chest muscles. Here, coming up, drive my shoulder blades back, Keeping them packed, hold, one, two, and squeezing together. Keep it in. I squeeze them together while I release that breath out. It helps me contract, helps me stabilize while I'm breathing out, get the extra air out. So we would do the prescribed amount of reps on that one, and the four flies, and then our last movement for our shoulders is our shoulder get ups. So with this one, if you have a book at home or a step, you can do this one. You can also just do it on the floor if you would like. I have a modification if you don't have a step to use. But we're going to get to a push-up position or plank position. I'm going to keep my core nice and tight. Quick breath out. Get one leg extended. Make sure my glutes locked up. Get the other one extended. I want to make sure my wrists are over my shoulders. They're nice and even. My butt's not up too high. My butt's not sagging too low. I'm just nice, even in the middle. And then with the get-ups, I'm just stepping up on the surface. One, two, one up and one down would be a wrap. Three, I'm really driving through that shoulder, squeezing my glutes. Give me the quick breaths out to keep stabilized. If you feel like your core is not stabilizing, I'm just coming up and down. So we're just walking up the surface and down the surface. It's really good for shoulder stability and shoulder control as well. It's really good for the core. It's a great full body movement to do as well. Um, a modification. You can go down to your elbows, just like so, and then do get ups. Just like that, if you do not have a raised surface to climb up and down on. So once you get through the shoulder get ups, then let's say if you were getting to your next set, you start off with the bridge with the press again, and then so on. So once you get done with all this, we have our finisher now. So we do the quad rock skiers. So this will be our Tabata 30 seconds on. 15 seconds rest, the quad throw the skiers. It can be a little tricky, so I'm going to do this without the mat. I don't want to slide everywhere. All right, I'm gonna start off in a plank position, but I'm gonna have my knees kind of bent, just like so. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you from the side. Knees back, butt's back. I'm still keeping a nice flat surface, keeping my core on. But all I'm going to do now is I'm going to swivel. So bring my hips side to side. Just like a skier bounding back and forth. Ski. But I'm using all my core on this one. 
I'm not letting my, you notice I'm not letting my lower back drop. I'm not overextending when I'm in this position. If you feel like when you start doing this one, this is a little hard, you can extend the legs and just rotate the hips. We're just dropping the hips. The obliques are kind of squeezing, bringing it back to center, and coming it back. A little bit harder, smooth the knees back, and we rotate. Just like so, let's do quad rows here. And the next movement would be plank rows. So we grab our dumbbells again. If you don't have a dumbbell at home, you could use a fill up a big water bottle. You can use water bottles. Uh, you could use uh, if you need some weights for pressing, you can do a melt carton full of sand or a uh, full of racks, really anything that's slightly weighted would definitely work out for any of these movements that I showed you today. So plank rows, if you get set up, I get my shoulders over my uh, wrists here. I always make sure my knuckles are facing towards the ground. We don't ever want a kink in the, the wrist here that's going to create some weakness there. Get my feet set, squeeze my glutes. And I actively, when I get into this, I make sure my core is on, and I kind of think about pushing through the ground with the other arm and pulling with the other one. And I always breathe out. Set. And you want to make sure when you come up, you pull and squeeze. So I want to make sure I'm squeezing that arm to the side of that lat, because this will definitely uh, build up our lats, our shoulders, and our back, as well as our core and our whole body. This is another great whole body movement. Come up. Nice and controlled on the way up, on the way down. All the way through, we're squeezing. Just like so. So once you get to, through those two movements, for that eight rounds, we go take a break, and then we get into our next movement, which are two body weight movements. So the first one that we do that you would do is a plank side crunch. So you just get into a plank. I always go down on my elbows. I'm here. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and do some crunching. Really. Just gonna bring my knee to the opposite elbow. Get those obliques. Always keep the belt low. I'm just driving that knee in. Keep my back nice and black. Every time I drive in, I breathe out to keep that stability in my core and uh, to help with uh, stabilizing my spine as well. Uh, key points for this one. Make sure you're breathing. We always want to make sure we're breathing. They also uh, keep your belly button and spine, shoulders are down and back, neck nice and long. And actually drive your elbows in when you're holding on to it towards the center, that'll help you keep bracing as well. The last but not least, the next movement, and feet out. These ones can be a little tricky. So I'm gonna do a couple modifications that you can probably do for this. So the original one is we lie down. I brace. Make sure I'm already activated. A good way to figure that out is put your fingers in your obliques, bring everything up and in, and your fingers should be pushed out slightly. So my core is activated, put breath out, and then I'm gonna bring my shoulders and my back off the ground with my legs, I'm gonna reach up towards my toes. So I'm gonna bring my legs up and reach. That's one, I'm gonna extend all the way through. Two. Three. Four. And we just work our way up with control the whole time. I'm not crunching my neck too much. I'm not rounding my back when I'm coming up here. If you need something a little bit easier, um, we can do a frog. It's called a frogger. Crunch, so you come up, and then you just reach. Just like so, I keep my back, keep my back nice and flat. I keep the space in between my neck. I'm not crunching or rolling in, I want to protect my, my neck as well. I'm thinking about squeezing my belly button and spine, and keeping this nice and packed as well. So, once you're done with the first Tabata, you get to this last one, get two of those done. If you want to keep going and do more, definitely do it, but this is what our upper body and core workout that we have going on today. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, please, please, please let me know. Um, hopefully this is a lot of fun for you. If you have any other questions, please let me know and uh, have a wonderful day.